really like this coming into uh, with this, uh, the way we ended up 2020, the way we started 2021. I really like where uh, we're going with this topic today. I think it's good, as you guys all know, to get back to the basics frequently, right? But it's good to get back to the basics and get down to some of these like, not granular things because we're not getting leads here. We're coming back up and saying what's important, right? So I've got I've got about three sticks sitting on my desk, and this is one of them. Why will they arrive? Why will they stay? Value before price. It sits right here. It's the only pink one because it's so freaking important. And really, that's what everything I do and everything I help you with comes down to. Okay, that's it. Why will they arrive and why will they stay? And it's pretty interesting because if you think about it, it doesn't get much higher level than that. And I do secret callers and I did one again. I'm doing more this week. And the issue with patient success, the issue with business success starts way before someone arrives in your clinic. And so even if you are strictly clinical and you happen to be watching this, I've had some people reach out recently um, with the last video I shared. It's pretty interesting. They said, you know what, I'm just a regular staff PT, you know, on the clinical side, and I, I want to be able to help my front desk because I, I think they, they understand it helps them. And I want to be able to help my front desk. So whether you're a staff PT or whether you're a front desk person or whether you're a business owner or whatever it is, right, then this mindset, all right, this work, the patient getting better starts further upstream. And there's a lot of clinical stuff everywhere. And people want to talk about where you guys have heard me say this, words that matter. And we're talking to the clinical experience. And we're talking about the therapeutic experience. And I'm like, if words matter in the 40, 30 to 45 minutes and 60 minutes you spend with that patient, right, isn't there a bigger impact outside of the clinical world? Right. And then we want to talk about marketing and people are putting words out there. So when someone calls your clinic, how do they know they should choose you? And it's a simple question. So I want you all to do this today. If you have a front desk person or you are the front desk person, it works the same. You take a new patient call today. Take some notes, whatever you need to take down. Look at the Actually, do this. Look at the data you collect on every phone call that's on your piece of paper, that's on your computer, that's in your EMR. You look at what's in front of you and you say, okay, Jerry, first question, why will they arrive? And the other thing you have to consider, obviously, there's some context with this. Why will they arrive in your clinic? Because maybe they're calling three other clinics. Maybe they called the massage therapist. Maybe they called the acupuncturist. Maybe they called the chiropractor. Why will they arrive? And if they called all five of you, why will they arrive in your clinic? You must be able to answer yourself. You must be able to answer to yourself as you're going through that list. How have I set up this patient for success with this practice, with this business, with this clinic in a manner that they understand that they should arrive? So I love to sit next to people taking the phone calls without, it, there's so much value in any of these ways, right? Listening to recorded calls. I listen to recorded calls every day and I love it. I also love sitting next to people and hearing their side of the conversation. It's really cool because then you get to write down what you hear from their side. And, it, and it's, a, it's a good perspective because what you end up doing at the end of that phone call, if I listen to a recorded call, I go in and go, hey, let's listen to this together. Okay, this was wrong. This was right. What do you think about this? If I'm listening to you on a phone call, I didn't get to hear the other side and all I hear is your answers and your questions, then I get to say to you, hey, why did you ask this? Hey, why did you say this? And it's a great way. It's way better than just listening to the phone calls. It's a great way to get into people's mindset about how they want to manage these calls. I was on a call yesterday. So if you were sitting on the other side of this, it would have been interesting as hell. I was on a call yesterday, started it the same way I do every secret call. Hi, my name is, I have low back pain. I want to get scheduled for physical therapy. That's how I start every secret call. First question I get is, do you have a doctor's referral? I would love to be sitting next to that person and at the end of that call going, why did you ask them if they had a doctor's referral? Not saying you shouldn't have asked that. Maybe it was 100% needed. 
Why did you ask them if they had a doctor referral first? There are two questions that you can ask at the beginning that are the worst questions you can ask. One is, do you have a doctor's referral? And the other is, what insurance do you have? Now, again, there may be a time to ask that question. So I want them to tell me if this was that time. Why did you ask that question? Question number two was, do you have insurance? And then they kept talking, how do you want to pay for this? Or do you want to not use your insurance or something? I said, I will use insurance or I will use cash. They said, okay, do you have your insurance card? So again, you guys see where this is going. So again, we step back at the end of the call when you've heard all this conversation and you've written all these things down, why will I arrive? So let's go through this conversation. Let's say I said, I have low back pain and I want to schedule for physical therapy, which is the majority of people calling into your clinics. And the front desk person, I say, okay, why will they arrive? And they say, well, they want to get scheduled for physical therapy. I go, great. They can get that anywhere they call. So again, why will they arrive? Well, they wanted help with their low back pain. So I got them on the schedule for their low back pain. Did you learn anything else about them? No. Nope. Okay. They can get that anywhere else. Well, they wanted an appointment on Thursday at 1030. Cool. Again, I ask you, why will they arrive? They can get that anywhere else. The other thing about, well, they wanted physical therapy. This is one of my favorite follow-up questions. Why will they arrive? Well, they wanted physical therapy. What is physical therapy to them? Again, this is probably almost the biggest why will they arrive. Because if I don't know what they think physical therapy is, then in no way, shape, or form can I decrease the risk of them not arriving. This why will they arrive question is the way you decrease your risk of a no-show cancel on the first visit. Your first visit or arrival rate will never be 100%, but damn, we want it as close as possible, my friends. And if you can answer the question, why will they arrive, then your arrival rate will go up. I put that in the title. Here's the other thing. You guys saw the follow-up question, why will they stay? And actually, both those questions should be answered at the end of that first phone call. But why will they arrive is the most important question and probably the place to start. Because if you can answer why, I'm going to give you the five things you need to collect on the phone call here in a second if you've hung out this long. Because if you answer why they why they can't arrive, then why they should stay is baked into it. And this is where not only are you increasing first visit arrival, you're increasing retention by answering this question. And I got a dirty little secret for every clinic owner out there you don't have you have a retention problem. And the best place to manage an increased retention is on the first phone call. So why will they arrive? I'm going to give you these five things. First, first thing I need you to do today, this afternoon, tomorrow, is either critique your own call or sit down next to your front desk and critique it. And why will they arrive? The patient having any referral or prescription is not a reason for them to arrive. Your team having their inf insurance information is not a reason to arrive, which is always funny because the worst arrival rates and the worst drop-off rates and the worst cancel rates I've worked with are in network clinics. So if you believe the insurance issue alone is enough to get people to arrive, the facts are out there, right? So none of those things will get them, will decrease the risk not arriving five things you need if you if i'm sitting next to you and i'm taking notes and i hear you sharing or collecting these five things the increase of arrival the increased likelihood of arrival goes through the roof and this is how I increased my arrival rate and it's how i increase other people's arrival rates so remember the ultimate objective here is a completed plan of care so the role of your front desk is to get them scheduled. Just kidding. That's what you're thinking. The role of your front desk is to get them to arrive for that first visit. So scheduled is a step in the process. So that's their thing. Why will they arrive? I got them scheduled. I'm like, man, you're playing the biggest fool's game now. Scheduled is a step in a process. Scheduled is not the objective. Scheduled is not the goal. So if I sit next to you, and at the end of the phone call, I've heard you have the discussion or answer the question around these five things, then you will more than likely increase the likelihood of first visit 
arrival. And when I say more than likely, you will, right? You must have their desired outcome. And everybody's thinking this and everybody says, yeah, you sell the solution. I'm like, not enough. Selling the solution is a process and has components within it. So you need their desired outcome, their goals. Desired outcomes, far better words. You need their desired outcomes, number one. Number two, you need their expectations around care. This whole phase two and the whole patient life cycle sits basically on doing two things, managing and setting expectations and building trust. When you manage and set expectations, you build trust. So it's this interwoven world. You can't separate them. And when you're managing and setting expectations, you're decreasing fear, doubt, and uncertainty. And when you're decreasing fear, doubt, and uncertainty, you're building trust. And when you're building trust, you're decreasing fear, doubt, and uncertainty, and you're managing and setting expectations. All of which what? Increase the likelihood of arrival in a completed plan of care. So number one was get their desired outcome. Number two was get their expectations. When I say get their expectations, that means manage and set expectations. Number three is they must know. By the way, all five of these are research proven. Jerry Durham in 2021 is giving you research proven information. Number three is make sure they understand they are seeing the expert. And when you look in the research and they do the follow-up questions on what's an expert, it's poorly defined. So you get to tell them what the expert is. And this is why I'm like selling the desired outcome is not enough. They must know they're seeing the expert is what it is. You guys can argue all fucking day within our profession that there are no experts and what experts are. The public expects it. So here's how you sell an expert. You find out what people want, their desired outcome. You find out what they expect, exercise hands on. I have just the person for you, Jerry. Boom. You got the expert. It's simple, right? It's simple. It's not easy. But this process, th th this is the process. Caring, compassion, selling, right? The whole give, you know, sell the result. I'm like, Phew. sell the result needs a process. So sell, sell the result is not the system. Number three, make sure they understand they're seeing the expert who will, number four, give them a diagnosis, which is kind of a broad term in our context. So tell them what's going on. Tell them why they're in this condition. They want it. They want it. It's research proven. And then number five, right, the big finish, and you can see how these are all flowing together. They want a map or a journey, a plan to their desired outcome. It's a plan of care. If on the first phone call, we can check those five boxes that the person, we know their desired results, we know their expectations, we have told them they are seeing the expert, we have told them who will give them a diagnosis, and they understand how they will get this plan of care, these this map to their results, then guess what? You just gave me why they will arrive. And if you check those five boxes, your arrival rate will increase. So here we are, 2021, you've got something you can do today. If you're on the West Coast, shit, it's only 7 a.m. Start doing them today. Go to your front desk, go to yourself. Are we checking these five boxes? This camera is so backwards in my world. Um, Right? Are we checking these five boxes at the end of the call? Because this tells us why they will arrive. And I think you can see back to why will they stay. If they know they're seeing the expert and you've set them up as the expert, who will get them back to what? Their desired outcome. Who will do what? Give them a journey, a plan of care. Your goal. All right. So there is my first gift to you in 2021. Use it today. Use it today. All these things require a process. Being compassionate and being caring requires a process. Selling the result requires a process. Understanding why people will arrive, step one, understand why they will arrive. Step two, build the process. So I just gave that to you. So if you guys want my uh, 10 point checklist that walks you through the first phone call on this, comment below 10 point checklist. I have a great version where I actually wrote out an explanation for why you want the 10 things. And what you'll see in there is not only the five things I showed you, but the other things you must do on that first phone call. So if you want the 10 point checklist, again, I've been giving stuff out for the last three weeks, then comment 10 point checklist below. And I will show you not only those five things, but the other things. But I gave you this anyway, and I told you how. So it's not just here's the 10 point checklist. I already told you how to make sure it's getting done. Right. And that 10 point checklist, here's a secret. If you sat through this long, 
then I'll know you're ready for it. The 10 point checklist is in the order it should be done. You realize my five point checklist I just gave you is in the order, right? That you're basically gonna manage it on the phone call, right? Because number five feeds back to everything else, right? And what was the golden one? Their desired outcomes. I have made, I'm gonna just make number make it easy, but I just for the math part of the of the of all the I'm not gonna make numbers up, I'll just give you the percentage. Of all the secret callers I've done, less than five percent, think about this for a second, have gone beyond my diagnosis to find out my desired outcome. So when I tell you why will they arrive and you start doing this and you go, Jerry, this is no different, everybody else is getting this, I'm like, no. This is why I say if other businesses, if other clinics are getting the same exact information as you, that's not a reason to arrive. Well, I just gave you the five things nobody else is doing. Nobody else, I'm telling you, I call clinics all the time. Oh, so you have low back pain. Cool. All right, we have you on 1030 at Thursday uh, for your, your physical therapist. I don't even get a name. All right, hold for your low back pain. Cool. So that's where we are. All right. Cheers all, happy 2021. If you want the 10 point checklist, just write 10 point checklist below and I'll shoot it off to you and I'll give you the really good one with all the explanations, not just the boxes to check out. Cheers.